Welcome into Game Night Live Rewind, Dusty Lister, Dane Stewart, as always presented by uh, Heidemann Associates, brought to you by the Utah National Guard. We're outfitted by Black Clover, and you know, sometimes you're going to fall down, and sometimes you're going to pick yourself up, and you need some mental performance, Dane, and that's where RJ Performance Group comes in. Yes, indeed, Dusty, and you know, they've got podcasts available, but uh, they can also help coach you to be better in your mental performance, be that with your family in the boardroom or out on the gridiron or the hardwood. To schedule time with Riley Jensen, his trusted network of consultants, you can go and visit and set up time at rjpg.net. Absolutely. And uh, Dane, I don't know where time goes, but it's been four years uh, since we interviewed Emma Cabot on the floor at SLCC. And, and uh, it is so much fun to watch her in that time, but also great to see her bring home her second state championship this last weekend uh, as they got to win the 6-8 title game. Yeah, you're right. I mean, kind of crazy, Dusty, to think that that uh, freshman and now senior year have have uh, come and gone for Emma Calvert, who's been kind of that main staple for four years for Fremont basketball. And I know there's been a lot of players that she's played with, and there will continue to be great players just coming right through that Fremont program. But it's going to be weird next year talking about the Silverwolves and not mentioning Emma. And as we've seen her career progress from what was mainly an interior post player to now being able to step outside and shoot the three and, and to be able to help contribute in ways that maybe you wouldn't imagine uh, a post being able to contribute. And it was that versatility that was really key in, in Fremont overcoming some of the challenges they had this year and, and getting back to the top of the mountain in their respective classification. Here with two-time state champion and uh, easily the best basketball player to currently come out of Fremont High School, Emma Calvert, and future BYU Cougar. Got to throw that one in, too. And uh, certainly one of the nicest girls you could ever meet. Uh, even in, when people get a little chirpy, she just smiles at them. So, Emma, first of all, congratulations. You bookend your career with the state championship. And I don't want to go negative, and this isn't meant to be negative. But was there a point in your high school career where you thought maybe that second championship was going to be elusive and, and, uh, and it might not happen? Um, well, not really, if I'm being completely honest. Um, we came to it just, I think we were kind of naive as my freshman year, like our little group, because um, our seniors were awesome that year. And so we just kind of, I don't think we knew how hard it was going to be to get another one after that. <clears throat> um, but we were really determined this year to get, to get another one. So. Well, you, you talk about that. And I mean, you know, you guys got a little bit of a revenge tour going on this year because for the third year in a row, you, you or fourth year in a row, you'd actually play Bingham, but you had lost your sophomore and junior years to them. How focused was the team going into that semifinal, knowing that you were going to have to get past the minors to be able to get another state championship? Um, I think we kind of knew what was going to happen. Like, you have to just know we're going to have to face them again to get where we want to get to. And you know that's okay because we gotta we gotta beat them if we're gonna truly be the state champions. So I think it was really awesome that we got to play them again and beat them this time. So well, we'll talk to us about that game because when you go into it, you know there's a little bit of PTSD, right? You got them, and they got you the last two times, and uh, one stopping you to a state championship, and the other one stopping you from winning one. Uh, what was that? What was going, were you guys talking about, or even self talk you had going in? To that matchup against them in the semis um i think we had to think of it more as like um not that we're playing the team that knocked us out not that we're playing the girls that took away our chance at the state championship or whatever we just kind of had to think of it as uh, it's another game it's in the state tournament we have to win it to get to the championship so we couldn't think of it as like oh no we're gonna have ptsd from this and stuff like that so we just kind of <laughs> play it as another game so you know this was a, a really special year for Fremont you guys go undefeated but to me a gardener who is a fan fantastic basketball player gets hurt in region how did you kind of keep the team together and and not lose hope having one of your starters go down with an injury and and yet still have this dream season this undefeated season uh accomplished how, how did you work through that and how the team process that and, and overcome that injury um, losing Tamia was really hard. Um, when she told us she was getting surgery and she would be out for the rest of the season, it was kind of like, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> but, um, we all kind of stepped up in different ways and things. And 
um, we had we had a lot of time before the state tournament to prepare, like what we'd have to do um, to win without Tamia and stuff like that. So it was not the most ideal situation, but we figured it out. So you certainly figured it out, uh, and and able to get through. So then you get to the championship game, and and you up against your future college teammate, uh, Nali Falatea. Uh, and here's a team that has just been torching the nets. They set a state record for the most three-pointers uh, in a season as a team. Uh, what was your guys' mindset going into that game against Harriman? Um, I think one thing that was really cool was, like, who we played before we got to Harriman. Um, we played Sky Ridge, like, second yeah second and they were like a really good like really fast really aggressive really good shooting team um they pressed us a lot and stuff so we kind of saw the same things as we did um the last two games versus Bingham and Harriman um but I think they just kind of prepared us for what we were gonna see and so I think that really helped us and like for the next few practices like get ready for those certain things that we kind of struggled with so you know, I, I saw something on Twitter, and if there's one thing we know, it's that Twitter never lies, right? But it, uh, <laughs> it, it mentioned that this senior class had never lost a region game. What does that mean to you? When you think back on your career at Fremont, what does that mean, that you were part of a group that never lost to a region opponent in four years? Yeah, that is, that is true. We haven't ever lost a region game, and I think that's really awesome. Um, we did have a couple close calls. Our um freshman year but um I think it's just really cool to be part of a group that can do that and have that amount of like tenacity and fierceness and stuff like that so I think that's really cool that we got to do that uh here's a question because you had a huge game in that state championship game you know you you had 30 points I think we had on our top five plays uh, all the things you did I mean he's Essentially, I almost said, I think you even had a triple-double in that championship game. But uh, Dane and I started joking that that David has yet to develop his outside shot like you have. So the question is, who wins a shooting contest, Emma or David Calvert? You know, I'm not really sure because we haven't actually, like, tested our shots recently. But yeah. um, we've asked each other this recently, and I say that I can, but he disagrees. So I guess we'll have to... <laughs> <laughs> well when you do it let us come we'll commentate it i'll stream it put it on uh, instagram and we'll put it on ksl sports <laughs> and everybody will know okay sounds good <laughs> uh last question for you uh you know one of our favorites is coach uh, dale about what's it been like to play four years under lisa dale about um it's it's really awesome i so I actually started to like know her and stuff when I was really younger. So they did like little, they just call them like little girls camps. So there's like um, all the way down to like first graders and stuff like that. So you just have like all these ranges of groups and stuff. And so I, um, I just like went to one of those camps and I just like loved it. I, I just fell in love with all those players. Um, the one time that I went to one of those camps was in the summer when Amanda Wayman and Shelby Mullen were there like helping with the camp and stuff. And so I just loved, I just loved everything about it. So when I got there, um, obviously it's a little more intense when you're in high school and not like a little third grader when she is telling you plays and stuff, but she is really, just really amazing. She doesn't ever give up on you. She always, um, she just is straight up with you. She doesn't like sugarcoat things like, if she wants us to do something different, she'll just tell you. And honestly, that's what's made me a better player is is her just like coaching me in the best way she can. So I just, I've always loved playing for her, so. Well, first of all, congratulations, Emma, on an outstanding high school career. Certainly look forward to seeing what you do at the next level and congratulations on getting to the next level. Not, you know, not everyone gets to do that, but uh, so excited to watch you. And I don't know how these past four years have gone by. Oh my heavens, it feels like it was uh, about a month ago that we were talking to you after your uh, championship as a freshman. But uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Congratulations on what has been an outstanding uh, high school career. Thank you so much. You know, you get a glimpse of the personality 
that pushes Emmett Calvert? Because a lot of times you got that player that's a four-year starter, um, someone that was recruited very, very early. Uh, they act a certain way, but you see Emma so smiley. And uh, and that's what's been so fun to cover because it's not like we've only seen her once in a while. We've seen Emma a lot in her high school uh, career. Yeah, and Dusty, I mean, it was it was kind of interesting. We were having this conversation during the course of the state championship game about you know her and her brother, and we we talked a little bit about it, asked in the interview, and and to get to see some of her personality, where you know she she's not going to concede it, but she's also not going to you know say, well, I'm a lot better, and and, and you know, that kind of speaks to who Emma is, or at least what we've been able to to learn of her and and how we've interacted with her over the course of the year, and you know, it, it was one of the things I think that you mentioned in the interview how. Some players might try to get under her skin, and yet she just doesn't allow it. She approaches the game in a way that allows her to stay cool and calm and collective. And you know what a what a great skill that is in terms of her mental performance and how she approaches things, uh, so that she doesn't find herself getting wrapped up in, in moments the wrong way or being a detriment to her team. But just recognizing uh, the team aspect and her ability to help contribute to that. It's been fun to watch over the last couple of years and. You know, it hasn't been an easy position for her when you consider they've got three posts that are all, what, 6'3", six, 6'4", six, or, or taller. Uh, it, some would take that as a threat. And you can see Emma talking about, oh, Tamia coming in and then getting hurt. Uh, you know, and it was going to be a challenge for us. And just the way that she recognized it's, it's not a threat. It's a way for her team to be stronger as they get more depth at her position. It, it just speaks everything to what team sports are and what we try and how we try to teach youth in terms of how they go about that and how they can contribute to a team. It's really refreshing to see in a four-year starter and such a good player like Emma Calvert. Oh, absolutely. And time certainly flies by. I mean, we think back of all the four-year players we, we've covered. I mean, just on the girls' side in the last few years, you know, with Kemi Martin and uh, Lavender Briggs and, and so many others, and to see now Emma uh, transition to her four years and, and she's gone. But what an absolute blast it was to watch her. And, you know, she talked about Coach Dale about one of our absolute favorites and, and to see them battle back and come back. And, uh, you know, there's a reason why Bingham is so good. And they knew they had to get over that mountain. It was a it was a crazy fun run to watch for the last four years. But uh, congratulations to Emmett Calvert and the Fremont Silver Wolves. For Vince Francis, Emmett Calvert, and Dane Stewart, I'm Dusty Lewis. Thanks for joining us and watching Game Night Live Rewind.